Hello there. Oh, it it it's official. Universe is live. It's full fledged. It is totally official now. That makes me happy. And all of us here at FLP want to congratulate Playful and thank them for making such a wonderful game. Um, it has definitely, definitely been a wonderful experience, and um, my own love for the game is uh, pretty obvious because I'm always playing it. And Shadow, um, Shadow has severe PTSD, and he actually uses this game um, when he's at home and able to. He uses this game to help counteract um, his anxiety attacks uh, because of its peaceful nature and well, since he's pro, he can also adjust the um, the settings so that the mobs are peaceful. And he just goes around and hangs out with the things and hugs them and, you know, he loves things. Um, I'm just doing a little bit of mushroom gathering. Uh, I completed the challenge... Oh, I don't even remember what time it was. Um, it was a time. Uh, suffice it to say, there are a lot of happy caves here, and let's go take a tour. Um, the castle was... I'll show you, but it was a difficult build, but not um, not because of any particular uh, aspect of it, per se. Um, it was mainly just gathering the resources, and it, it, it's ten dollars, uh, you might uh, ten dollars U.S. or a thousand coins to purchase um, the block set and the recipes. Uh, to buy the kit um, and actually uh, have all of the blocks, that will set you back another t uh, 2,000 coins or $20 US. Essentially a coin is worth a penny for those countries that still have pennies. Sorry Canada, you'll have to deal. Um, but basically, uh, we picked a wonderful area. I mean, look at all of these wonderful caves in this one. Oh, that one goes deeper than I thought. Anyway, we have lots of caves to explore here. And as I mentioned in a previous video, I want to add a road coming through here. And it'll probably actually um, bypass here and go through a tunnel there, leading to the tower. Um, which is almost due south. Can't see it from here though, it's a bit too far. Uh, map wise, I do believe somewhere around here, I think. Um, oh, yes, there are. There's the forest. Um, so it should be right about there. So almost due south. Several chunks, and if you look at the map, I did not. I did not plan that. I did not plan it to be right in the middle of four uh, four claims. That that just happened. Um, but you can see how big it is. And if this was actually in a claim, you would see that it would slightly go around it. Um, it's just a little bit bigger. Uh, by about, I think, four blocks? I think it was, or four or five blocks. I think it's like 64, 65 blocks wide. Um, anyway, uh, since we actually have slope blocks, this will ramp down, or it will continue over that way, and I'll just level this upwards. Um, don't know what I'm going to use yet for the road, because uh, in the medieval period, um, you did not really have paved roads for the most part. 
and when you did it was usually within a large city and on top of that um, from what Shadow says most of those were left over from the Roman Empire so it'll probably be cobblestone or um, just dirt it might just be dirt rotate a few blocks on the edges to uh, give the grass the edge anyway so here's our entrance and one really cool thing, I love the drawbridge design, and I noticed this earlier, and I, I think I mentioned it in an earlier episode, but the way it's designed, when the chain is pulled, instead of pulling it diagonal, as in many uh, classic drawbridge designs, this one actually runs off of uh, a wheel and pulley system. So let's go up to the top real quick. The chain goes into the back, um, underneath here, and then it runs up and connects to this. So in the gatehouse, there's not really a mechanism um, inside, more's the pity. Uh, but when this wheel turns, it pulls the chain that way, shortening the chain up. And what happens down here? You can see the uh, system right here. Um, what happens over here is that this is actually pulled diagonal and would run up sides. Now I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure why there are not slopes going up the tops to make this a perfect uh, diagonal, but it's possible that it just runs up the edge here. But that's essentially how that would uh, that would function. And the portcullis, um, which I, I agree with the design now. I originally was wondering why it wasn't made out of um, iron fence. But, or not iron fence, um, what is it called? These things! Iron bars, thank you. But due to the sheer size of the castle, this makes a bit more sense, since it would hold up much better to a siege engine. And what's really cool about this design, you can see that there's grating in the bottom for it to fit into. I'm still not quite sure why um, there are two rows when there's only one set of teeth. But you can also see little notches here, um, and of course chains. But uh, theoretically, the drawbridge would come down and it would lock into any of these side bits. Um, the gatehouses themselves, the section where the mechanism would be, would be up there. And, um, down here would be just simply, uh, guard stations or whatnot. Um, yes, let's explore outside first, and then we'll get into the, the rest of the place. This is a little stable area, um, presumably for horses, which don't exist in this world yet. Um, well, don't exist in Creative House yet uh, at all. But you can see there are some uh, some barrels, and we, since we don't actually have barrels, uh, they're death urns, uh, which works out quite well. I love this. Um, you can see the difference in color, and if you are astute and have played around with rotating uh, the blocks, you would know that this right here is dirt, but that is actually grass, as you can see on the little uh, uh, thingy above my stamina. So yeah, small area for, um, for horses. There's a little bit of grazing room, uh, not much of it though. And I, I kind of love how it was a nightmare to put this together because all of this was grass, and we know who to blame now, because the live stream actually named the culprit of who designed this. I won't repeat it here though, um, because I do appreciate this this amazing build. Um, Shadow has a few other complaints, but that's just because he uh, he's a specialist in medieval history, um, so castle design is one of his. Uh, one of his little uh, areas of study. Um, 
and French and English castles were built somewhat differently, this would most likely be... Uh, I want to say it would be based off a European castle, but um, Shadow tells me that it, it's slightly based off of a more English design. Although I have no idea what the difference is. Um, this was interesting. You have the forge here for the blacksmith. And then you have the actual smithy, and I love how the uh, blocks there sort of denote it. This was never changed. Um, I want to put... he's yelling at me. Um, I don't know if you can hear it or not. But I want to put this... But that is incorrect. According to Shadow, there was a separate letter for the TH sound, the, the sound. And so it looks like a Y, and that's why most modern people say ye old, but it was actually the old. Um, so picky. But this is my world. You know what? So I'm going to do this. I'm sure he's going to uh, spell it differently when we get to building this in the main world, but for now, that is how it's going to be. Um, inside you have a small uh, small room. This could have been... Uh, it's most likely storage. You have a weapons rack and chests. We do not have armor racks yet. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking for it from Playful. Shadow is very adamant that he wants them. Um, but for now, the armor probably fits in the chests. Um, can we get out of here? Thank you. This was an interesting uh, design. Um, armor bars over the windows, and if you look, there are trap doors. Which act as shutters. That is really cool. I like that. Um, the new chests actually hold up to 32. I don't know if you can see that down there. And they're really beautiful designs. Um, that one is actually facing the wrong way, I believe. But there's a central latch, and there are two hinges on the back here. That is facing the wrong way. Let me see if I can... Uh... There we go. Block rotation is very useful, but it is still um, seriously flawed. And one thing I would... Playful, if you're watching this, um, a wonderful little upgrade I would love to see. If somebody said it to just me, I would love to see a little lock appear on the, the end here. Because we have the latch, we have the, uh, the opening for the lock to fit in. So having a lock on there would be just absolutely... Uh, that would be absolutely splendid. I don't know why I fixed that. I'm the only one in this world. Um, but yeah, that would be absolutely like just wonderful and just add to the coolness factor. And it would also be a visual way for people to say, hey, I can't access this. It's a private chest. Um, which saves people the effort of clicking on it and going, hey, I can't get in here. Um, and then having to wait until the owner of the chest is online to request uh, access. Um, okay, we are going to go outside for a moment, and let me see if we can do it from up here. Oh yes, Shadow wanted me to point out the flying buttresses, which are really nicely designed, are actually doubled up like this. Um, pretty cool. Flying buttresses, from what he says, were designed um, for cathedral use by the, the masons and what they are they're pillars that lean against the wall to hold it from falling outwards inside you have structure that keeps it the walls from falling inward but you still had the issue of these giant stone walls falling outwards due to gravity so the flying buttresses actually act as braces to hold it up kind of cool um so let's go up here on both sides, 
these rear towers do not actually go into the hall, which I was surprised. Um, they just end in a blank wall. Uh, what we're going to do, we are going to jump out, which is really intelligent at this time of night. And let's take a quick look at the back. Um, I really love the fact that the crenellations and mosculations actually look uh, they look very realistic um, and I hope I, I pronounced the latter right this is kind of a strange design and you can see it, it follows all the way up um, with the windows mixing with the barred windows uh, it looks good but it's just it's strange um, not something you would expect and you can see I have a small um, small crevasse going down here. Uh, this will eventually be cleared out and these will be more terraformed. But uh, it wasn't necessary for the challenge. Frankly, I was so sick of mowing the lawn. After clearing out so much of that and then putting down the top layer only to find out there was another layer underneath, it was ridiculously frustrating. Um, and you can see I still have a lot of the blocks. I should get rid of these. Um, oh, I will show you something fun with those soon. Since I have not yet cleaned up the courtyard and removed everything. But we are going to be doing some fighting here. Actually, I should do it this way. Um, I don't know if I can get up there now. Which is a good thing, because if I can't get up there, mobs can't get up there. So let's go back in. Um, ooh, food. I was tempted to just leave all of the... Um, the vegetables, but I did not. You can see I have one um, one little thing here. I, I'm going to be removing those, the uh, uh, honeycomb farms. They will actually end up... Uh, oh, I can show you this now, actually. When you open up the processor, you can now do roofs, and you can do floors. I don't have a... or not floors, stairs. So, for example, the iron stairs, you see you now have an outer corner and an inner corner. And the roofs, you have an outer corner and an inner corner. Let's just make one of each. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. And I am out of inventory space. Because I am always out of inventory space. Um, do I have anything else that can go in there? Okay, I can put stuff in there. Alright, so let's take a look at this real quick. And of course, um, they are discoverable. Now there is one uh, catch. Slopes. Um, such as the grass slope here. Those will not actually work in the processor because they are also processed. So a crafted item, such as stairs or roofs, can be, um, they can actually be processed uh, into slopes, or not slopes, uh, edges. However, um, you cannot do the same for a, uh, a block that's um, already processed. The processor will not process it twice. And note, as I put this down, you do have to play with rotation for these. Um, oh, and that's something else of note. The bottom is actually textured on these, which is really nice um, for some of the things that I had a problem with in this build. Uh, I did not really mention it, but if you look inside the roof of the smithy, it's literally a bunch of these in wedges on the top. It looks horrible. Um, 
I might change that, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to touch those. Uh, in the main world, Shadow plans to actually add corners to the towers, but I am not. I'm not going up there and modifying that without a glider. I'm sorry, it's just not worth it. If I was doing it when I was first building it, that's one thing. I am not going back up there. Um, anyway, so you see, it's a very seamless edge, very, very beautiful, um, and the stairs work the same way. But that's a, uh, a wonderful new touch. So if you're planning to build a Colossal Castle, I would suggest, uh, like strongly suggest, that you add those in um, to design. And I believe David was the one who mentioned on the stream that they will possibly update this and hopefully other uh, designs in future, like the blueprints. Um, but not in the near future, but they will likely update them to include the uh, new blocks. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. And we will want our weapon. This trapdoor leads down to the dungeon. And I had a problem with this, as I mentioned earlier. But it goes down, and we'll have to close that up again later. Um, oh good, there's nobody here. Mobs will actually spawn in here. And you can see their chain siding or dangling down. So if you're fighting, um, I'll just leave that out. You can always jump up onto the chain and keep attacking, uh, and hopefully be just out of hit range. You see, there's some bones on the floor and lots of uh, growth. I just wish that the entrance was inside and not outside. Here is the actual door, and the reason why I wish that was because it would be too easy for a thief to come in, pick the lock, and everybody just escape. Um, it might help if I made this so I could leave. Thank you. Uh, that is my one gripe with that, though. The door should have been facing inward and not outward. But what I might end up doing is building um, a small uh, jailer there, and I'm sorry, I, I, I'm i sorry, Shadow gave me a look. It is not a dungeon. Um, it is actually a jail, spelled G-A-O-L, uh, or Gale. A dungeon, the word comes from donjon, which D-O-N, what is it? D-O-N-J-O-N, which has to do actually with up in the ramparts. Um, I don't honestly know how that works. Uh, we are talking about doing a series, and um, during the Create a Crew live stream last night, uh, Curious Key also mentioned a similar uh, inspiration. Um, but we are talking right now about doing two special series and they will probably go up on the main channel as opposed to mine um where we will be doing builds and there will be historical settings obviously medieval is going to be the uh one of the big focuses or foci um but we will be doing that and then shadow will write out a narrative and i will well narrate sort of like i did for the kimmy uh kimmy review and the idea there is to actually use Creativeverse as a teaching tool, um, which I believe is a, a wonderful idea. They actually did that with Portal. Uh, Portal is used in schools. Um, and the idea is to be able to give tours and explain different components. Uh, obviously, it will require a little bit more editing so we can actually show the words um, on screen. But we plan to do that, and we were also talking about um, a language uh, a language course. Um, basically, Shadow speaks several languages, none of which he's fluent in. Um, I'm still getting in the grasp of English, uh, which was my first language. So that should tell you something. 
but um, he is talking about teaching French and Russian uh, using Creativeverse and basically teaming up with a uh, gamer from one of the, who speaks that language natively and coming in and doing episodes where we learn the different names of the blocks and um, put signs up and, and basically build uh, and learn languages at the same time. Which I, I think is kind of cool. Not quite sure how he plans to do it. Um, it's still in the planning phase, or phase, obviously. But, uh, yeah. You get some lovely views here from the guardhouse. Or from the guardhouse. From the tower. This is the first le uh, level. And literally, um, all of these towers are the same. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to go up in all of them. But you see there's a little room here. And these chandeliers are just wonderful. I love those. And then this is the top floor. Now if I was to poke a hole there, there's actually room above. Uh, which has... It's just basically the interior for the roof. And because of the way the roof is designed, you will not get mobs up there because it's open. There's, there's lighting available from natural light. Anyway, these make really cool curtain rods. Uh, we still don't have curtains in Creativeverse, hint, hint. Um, but they look like amazing little curtain rods, and of course these are for the banners that are hanging outside. Not much chance of them falling off when they're built inside of uh, the stone walls. So let's go down here. And here we have a walk around. And these were actually designed to protect uh, soldiers on the, the roof. Um, normally they would be higher, like you would have this would be the, the height, and then you would have uh, these poking up. Um, and what they are, they're actually slits that an archer can fire through while being partially protected. And a lot of times they'll load uh, their arrow or their crossbow behind this and quick step over, aim, fire, step back. Um, I don't know if any uh, medieval based video games do that or not, but it's worth noting. Okay, let's go down here and proceed on with the tour because we are already at 27 minutes and we've just explored one tower. Um, I love the ramparts here. Uh, the fence is actually just, it's really well done with the fence and slopes and stuff. And here you actually see this is more like what it would be realistically. That is not so much, but then again at that height, um, not much chance of you getting shot unless you're built beside a hill like this. See over here again. You load up, fire, take cover. Um, and yes, we'll go in here. And this is built actually um, right on, almost right on top of the uh, of the smithy. And again, the two sides are pretty much the same um, here and over there. So we'll just go up this one. And I love the use of steps to create the corners and edges and all of that. Um, again, nice view. I have no idea why there is a rockster on the roof. But if we see him when we go up there, we'll, we'll say hi. Um, they might even do it nicely. All right, this is something that I I loathe about the ladders, and I often cheat. Oops, okay, that will be dangerous later on. Um, but I often cheat by putting an extra one up there. Uh, it works. I wish it wasn't necessary, but it definitely works. Oh, that's the wrong way. Um, and we just got shut out. There we go. Okay. 
and this is actually the roof of the smithy right here and you can see this is why they um, built the roof as they did was to keep an even texture but I think we can do it better uh, because we have those new blocks so I want to try fixing that up at least anyway I'm going over the fence here there we are and we are now approaching the front and again we have a wonderful view uh, castles almost always had barred windows or arrow slits in other words really narrow windows and they almost never had them on the first floor uh, just because it's easy for an invader to attack that way um, and just to show you that these are pretty much the same if we go up here I mean the height is different and this one actually has um, the windows going down to the floor but again up there is actually the uh, the sort of um, hidden room where the roof is and again we have the tower here so let's leave that alone for now and head down now you do have only two of these entrances and let's go down briefly just so we can take a look at the, the way it's built or try to go down briefly please fix the ladders um, you just to show you the structure here it, it's actually really nicely done um, that piece I'm not quite sure about I'm not I don't know why that was put there but it, it works anyway back up um, that's the more interesting of the two the other one it just has a little bit of a, a fence but it's mostly open ladder so we come in here and this would be the gatehouse right here which the mechanism should be in this room but it's not so we'll just ignore that for now if you come over here we are now on the main rampart above the gate and you see a couple switches I did not wire these up yet but um, that's partly because I want to actually add a mechanism so that this phases and one turned on its side appears because these are actually lava traps when you turn that that will tip the uh, tip the urn and lava will fall out um, and in medieval times one of the defenses that they used one of the traps they had something similar to this but it would actually pour out hot tar or uh, a similar substance usually boiling oil they would actually boil the oil and pour it into these urns and then tip them onto uh, anyone trying to get into the gate. Really, really nasty. There's no fence here. Um, no offense. Uh, <laughs> but you get a lovely view. I mean, look at that. And that rockster is just happy as all get out. Look at that. Um, I, guess he, I guess he's serving a little bit of guard duty. Uh, he matches so no complaints um heading in again most of these are the same so we can skip them uh there's very little variety and that's actually normal um because the towers were designed for soldiers to come in and uh sometimes they would have little areas where they could sit or rest but for the most part it was just a place to gather um, and you had the arrow slit windows uh, and it was easier for them to get up and down the stairs which uh, Leonardo da Vinci designed a two-way stair system so those going up were not getting in the way of those going down um, so if you ever go into a public area where you have keep to the left or keep to the right you have him to thank. Beautiful view from this side, though. You can see we've got our little um, our little sea here, 
and of course the river flowing down, which was part of why I picked this location. I, I think it worked out beautifully. Um, probably could have moved this over a little bit, but I think this is actually the perfect spot for it. I don't, I don't think we could have found a better uh, location. Coming over here. Again, these are pretty much the same. So I'm not going to bother going up these last two towers. Um, and instead we are going to go down this set. Or try to go down this, uh, this ladder. Come on! There we go. The odd thing was, while I was doing the build, I never had a problem with that. Now that I'm filming, um, we're having a problem with that. Okay, coming in here. Now this was something else that was a little bit interesting. When you come into the main keep, uh, there, there's no door. Um, that was one of the first things noted. Oh, I forgot to take those down. I had the pillar up to uh, fix some things. Uh, but yeah. Nice carpeted entrance. I, I, I never got why it... it Sounds like you're walking on leaves. Maybe because they're made of leaf? I don't know. Anyway, um, you can see here, it goes way up. And I'm a little bit saddened that they didn't do something with that space. Um, I mean, it looks majestic and all, but they could have put a room up there. Uh, wonderful chandelier. And I, I really like how you can merge several chandeliers and even add in uh, sconces in order to make a large chandelier. Um, and you have the throne here. Nice use of the, uh, the new blocks. Even though it, does, it doesn't really match up quite right with the floor, but it still looks good. Okay, and let's go up the stairs. Oh, real quick. Look at that one. Here we go. If you open these doors, it actually takes you behind the keep towards the uh, the towers. I just locked myself out again. It's a good way for the guests to escape if the uh, keep is being sieged by keepers. Um, anyway, coming up here. You have a small dining hall, and I really like the use of flower. These, uh, these flowers really, really are nice. Using vine and then sticking the flowers on the edges. This is a little bit messy. Um, I think it would have looked a little bit better if it was coming out of a flower pot, but you can't really do that to keep something that height. So it just, it's a trade-off. This was a really cool thing. It's a little bathroom. Um, and again, you have shutters that can be used to uh, hide the various um, linens and such. Plenty of storage. A wash basin. Uh, they didn't really use tubs for the most part. In fact, they didn't really bathe for the most part. But you have a nice fire here so you can warm the water up and use it fresh. Um, that also could be a kitchen, incidentally. <laughs> now that I think about it, um, this might well have been meant to be a kitchen. I don't know, I like the idea of it being a little bathroom. It's something we don't see a lot of. On this side, there's just a small fireplace and seating, which is off to the side, um, oddly enough. But it's still a cute little room. Nice use of space. And let's go up these. We've got some weapon racks here. Obviously, when you're in a castle, uh, safety is paramount. So you need to be ready for anything. Oh, and Shadow reminds me that they didn't actually have bathrooms in castles. You literally just peed in a hole that overlooked the uh, the moat. Okay. 
Um, I really don't want to know what the breeze feels like if you do that. But uh, then again, he's Scottish, so he's probably used to that. These, I'm not going to go all the way up this because this is dangerous. The use of slabs here and slabs up here means you can literally walk off the edge of this without any jumping. In fact, if you noticed, uh, going up here, a lot of this isn't even step. It's just slope. Or not slope, uh, slab. It's an S word. A um, little bit of a view, not much. There's our friend. And honestly, could have put the roof all the way back there. Um, it just wanted the front, but it would look kind of nice. So, here we are. This is the uh, royal bedroom. And you can see more switches here. I'm not exactly sure what that one was meant to be for. Um, this one almost definitely is for the fireplace. I'm not quite sure. Uh, at any rate... Uh, you've got plenty of chests and storage and bookshelves, and this was a very fascinating uh, idea. You have your blankets, it's turned down, and you've got pillows. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I would sleep on a pillow like that, but you know. And then the backboard is actually exposed to the outside, but it doesn't really show because of the, uh, the roof. And if you come up here... You have a private study, and this side just goes back down the other way, or it doesn't. Okay, uh, it comes out to a rampart though, and I'm not sure if we can fall down there or not. We probably can, I'm not going to chance it. Um, if we jump, come around here. And basically do a full circuit. But you see there's no door here. And incidentally, we wouldn't have to jump. I think that was sectioned off intentionally. A lot of things in this castle, even though they're quirky, were done intentionally. Um, and then there's the door that went outside that we saw passing by. This is one of my favorite tidbits. Now you have to do a little bit of parkour, and I'm terrible at parkour, so I usually just set a block down underneath the chandelier. But if you jump and manage to catch, there we, I did it. Manage to catch this just right, you can come up, and there's one more door. Which at the beginning, this is the door I put in to get the fireworks. Um, I wanted this to be the last piece placed because it's just a beautiful view. Look at that skybox. There are a lot of planets out there, too. Okay, so, um, that is pretty much it. Um, there are a few flaws to the design, uh, mostly dealing with symmetry. Uh, some of these rooms lack the torches or the lamps, um, when they shouldn't, and I went the wrong way. Oops, did I put something down? I put a ladder down. We don't need a ladder there. Um, I really sort of like the aesthetic appeal of adding, uh, see this one doesn't have a sconce. Do I have any sconces on me? No, I don't. Otherwise I would put one there. Um, I like a lot of the things about this. Oh, I ran away. I was going to try and tame him. Oh well. Uh, coming down here. It's a little bit um, difficult coming up and down these stairs because you can get caught. It just takes a little bit of work. There is no lamp on the other side. Uh, they are essentially identical except for the fact that there is a lamp missing. So I don't really like to go up and down that one. It's darker and more chance of a mob spawn. Although mobs don't typically spawn on uh, crafted blocks. 
So yeah, I mean, this is a this was a wonderful build. I really enjoyed it. Um, honestly, if you don't have money and you don't have pro, you can do this. You might need somebody to provide you with the blocks if you can't afford the um, the recipes. But if you can afford the recipes or you can get somebody to uh, go through the effort of crafting the blocks, I strongly suggest you provide him the resources. Like, strongly suggest it. Um, you can build this without too much difficulty. It took me 36 hours, but that was because I was gathering resources. I would say the build itself... The build itself took maybe 12, 14 hours tops. Probably less than that, because I wasn't really... I wasn't really timing it exact. I mean, I was working and I would take, ba you know, bathroom breaks and things like that. So I didn't really get an accurate um, perspective of uh, uh, full on inventory. Um, I couldn't really tell what. Uh, what took how long and such. Now, if I was to build this again, though, the thing that I would I would advise anyone who is attempting to tackle this, and what I would personally do. Look at those lighting effects. That that's just gorgeous. That came out. Uh, was it R forty? That is so beautiful. Anyway, I would strong. Yeah, I know you're happy up there. I would strongly suggest that you begin with the keep. Um, and when you get up there, the two roofs up there, just build up and don't worry about uh, climbing to put the tops on because you can actually put them up while working on the, uh, the central roof. You can actually get in there, put the, la the top layer or so of blocks and the... Um, the torches or the, the lamps. Uh, it's so weird calling that a lamp. Anyway, um, so that'll be it for me. I will probably do a few mods to this. Uh, most likely not much though. I'm pretty happy with it how it is. And um, obviously, I still need to clean up the courtyard to get these moved. But I will. I will actually probably take some of the materials and shift them over and what I'm going to do with the smithy since we have a forge here I might actually put a forge in here and use this as my metalworking station um, at least for this area I mean we have that giant mine down there and we'll giant quarry and we have plenty of caves to explore so this would be a really great base uh, and this will actually most likely be our base uh, for season two, because I want to do a lot more exploration and uh, such during season two. For now, let's head home. Um, I, I'm not going to neglect the tower. Uh, it's just gathering all of the materials to use that much asphalt for the upper layer is very difficult and I did um, I did use a bomb uh, now that the bombs have been upgraded I did actually get us down to the corruption layer let me show you that real quick if we come down here and I believe I actually showed this on camera but in my forge area, I bring us down here, which is where the stalactite uh, mine is. And it's literally only two levels above where the ah, lava layer is. Okay. And yes, there is the corruption. If we come down here... Now there is a bomb that will destroy corruption now. Um, so I might mine some of this, or I might just use a bomb. Either way, we have made it, and in Season 2, we will finally get down there and explore the lava lair. Or the, the, not the lava lair. We've been to the lava lair.
we will go down and we will explore the corruption lair. I think I just put myself in a corner. Okay, you know what? Let's let's use this. Um, build that out just a little bit so we can actually get back if we don't keep falling. Oh, that might uh, have something to do with it. Alright, so you know what? I'm just going to do this. There we go. So yeah, this is coming along quite nicely. Um, I am not going to be working on this as much on camera as I did uh, in season one because I think you guys get the idea by now of how this is being built. The bottom, when I build down to the corruption uh, floor, I'm going to build all the way down to the end of the world. And then uh, do what Shadow and Rainbow were doing, which is place two blocks up from that and then place my floor above it because corruption and other effects can travel through up to two blocks. So by doing that and then placing my floor three blocks above the end of the world, we will not suffer corruption damage. So yeah, almost an hour. I think this is a record. Um, might actually be a record for this channel. But there was a lot to see and uh, a lot to discuss. So that would be it for this little mini-series. Uh, once again, happy birthday to Creativeverse. Um, Shadow was actually keeping track, and when they pushed the button, it was 12.37 Eastern Standard Time. So for those of you who like to celebrate a birthday on the exact moment, 1237 is the exact moment. And it will be funny because Creativeverse is three years old, uh, actually about four years old if you, uh, a little bit over four years old if you count uh, its initial conception as thereafter. And um, the beginning of the project as a whole. Uh, 40, I'm going to say it, it's 42 uh, releases, with 42 being the official release because of the fact that they actually introduced the uh, officially introduced corners. Uh, it had been out for a week or two and they've been testing it, but because um, because of the fact that he had to add that and they did a lot of more tweaks and bug fixes, I will consider that a release or a revision. So 42 really was the ultimate update. We might not get an R43, but R42 gave us a full-fledged uh, official game. So until next time, be sure to have fun and build your hearts away. And keep note, because the devs might be watching, and they might actually adopt some of your ideas into future uh, blueprints. Or they might take your suggestions. We've been asking for these, uh, these corners for a long time, and they were listening. And now we have them. So take care, everybody, and I will see you all again with the regular series very, very soon.